Hello and welcome to PTA Live, the show where we talk about all things breakout trading. And today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite topics, or maybe two, breakout trading and books. We love reading books. And joining me today, of course, is Mr. Breakouts himself, Thomas Nesnedo. Welcome, Thomas. Are you there, Thomas? I can't hear you. Oh, we lost Thomas already. It's not a good start. <laughs> Let's try again. Hey, Thomas, welcome. Oh, thank you very much. I don't know what <laughs> happened. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No problems. I'll just say we're going to be talking about two of our favorite things today, breakout trading and trading books. So uh, before we get started, though, Thomas, we all know that you're yes. traveling around Asia and you're typically in a different spot whenever we speak. Where are you today? Uh, actually, nothing magical. I'm back to the Kuala Lumpur. And just to look, guys, I was in Laos uh, last two weeks, and I got all the diseases that I could that I could got. Uh, I, I I got some virus and food poisoning. Who knows? Maybe some light version of COVID and everything at the same time. So, so it's it's not horrible, but I'm a little bit. Um, sometimes I need to pause or cough or something like that. So please be patient with me. Otherwise, all good. <laughs> Here we are. Right, well, we've, we've got a comment here from Neil starting early today. It looks like Thomas is in the witness protection program. <laughs> uh, good one, Neil. Something like this, yes. Yes, exactly. Good one. All right. Well, uh, how about we... Um, so we're talking about algo trading books today, and we're talking about advanced books. So I think it was just before Christmas, wasn't it, Thomas? Last year we spoke about... Um, algo trading books for beginners and we named our favorite four and why we think they're good uh, but before we get into the advanced ones why do we want to talk about algo trading books like what's the benefit of of uh, you know reviewing some of these first of all guys can you just confirm you can hear me that the internet connection is okay so far so good yeah can hear you uh, you're a little bit blurred I'm having but... small delay yeah, you're a little bit blurred, but we can see you and hear you. Okay, that's the most important thing. Yes. Uh, so, 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 <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So, like, sorry, my voice will be very. My pitch will be very high sometimes today. <laughs> just my voice is <laughs> changing the intonation. <clears throat> so last week we covered, or last show we covered, uh, beginners books, <clears throat> uh, and uh, I think. <clears throat> You know, I think one part part of a uh, trader's journey is that we're never satisfied with the amount of information that we um, that we really uh, consume and that we want to uh, fully grasp uh, about trading. And uh, no trader ever ended with a beginner's uh, book, right? Like every trader is yeah. um, keen on uh, every book out there. Uh, and uh, of course, I've been reading since I started with trading for many years. And I realized there are some really, really good books for more advanced traders. And by more advanced traders is basically for traders who already have all these beginner stuff sold, solved out and uh, sorted out. They know what they do, why do they do these things. Not necessarily they must be long-term profitable. Their uh, performance still probably fluctuates or is not as smooth as they would want to. But overall, there are books for these uh, traders as well. And I think these traders, are, these books are really, really great. When you know what you're doing already, you're in a spot that you have direction. Let's say you have some modal approach, but you're still far away from being perfect with what the performance you would like, uh, like to have. And now the question mm. is, what's next? What kind of sources could help you? And does the the kind of sources that I try to compile the, for today's show. Yeah, well, we've got some really um, fantastic books on the show today, Thomas. So I can't wait for you to uh, um, share those and, and we can talk about them a little bit. So after you finish coughing your lungs right. out, you want to get started? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Guys, this is the, really a witness protection today, you know, just like, like I, I'm under surveillance and not being properly fed and uh, no water be given. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so let's talk about, let's talk about because um, some of them are helped me a lot, helped me tremendously on my own uh, 
trading journey with a lot of different parts. And I want to show, show uh, this uh, specifically. So the first one is called, and I think some guys must know this uh, book already. Just waiting for it to, here we go. Yes, yes. The evidence-based technical analysis. Yeah. Uh, and let me let me share something with you about this book. Um, so you you probably know that um, in trading, a lot of people are uh, skeptical. Uh, and I, by nature, I'm not I'm not so skeptical person. I'm I'm usually quite. I would say sometimes I'm really over optimistic. Uh, which is uh, which is as harmful as being overly skeptical in trading, um, and uh, I know that I know that sometimes I'm too you know like over optimistic and over enthusiastic, and uh, my temper temperament sometimes needs to get down to the earth. Uh, and this is the book that really got me uh, back to earth in trading uh, because this book perfectly explains if something doesn't still work uh, well for you in trading. The chances are that you're working with some kind of wrong assumption or bias uh, or hindsight or uh, you're somewhere fooling yourself or you, you're creating stories which are not out there. Uh, and this this book uh, was, uh, to me, this was absolutely breakthrough uh, in balancing my own um, natural way uh, of living, living uh, way, viewing the life back to the earth to the point where I realized how much of a danger is out there by uh, really um, underestimating uh, things like overfitting, curve fitting, uh, data mining. And this book gave me enormous amount of um, skepticism, skepticism mm -hmm. and deep understanding of the danger of all these biases. And I th after reading this book, I really had to be way more honest with the uh, my way for of looking at trading, where the data come from, where where I still just uh, making uh, blind hunches and not really being scientifically driven, uh, and um, it helped me a lot to balance both parts. So I would say um, this is great. If, if uh, it definitely pushes your boundaries, uh, it makes you think about your trading uh, differently. If you're overly skeptical already, do not read it because then it will not help you much. But if you have these tendencies being, being overly optimistic or uh, sometimes drawing beautiful pictures without having a rock solid uh, foundation, uh, then this book will help you rethink, ritually rethink every step of your uh, development and robustness testing process and make sure that you're not implementing subconsciously any bias or any hindsight or anything that could really jeopardize your uh, real out of sample uh, performance. And also, I have to say, this book was not easy to read for me. It was very challenging for me to read it. The language, uh, the message, it went a lot against some part of my naturality, yet the effect was fantastic. Yeah, I have to agree, actually. I read this book. Uh many, many years ago. I'm probably due for another reread of this one, but I, uh, I, I do remember that that had a lot of good info about um, survivorship bias and, and um, data mining in there as well. Uh, I agree with you. I think from memory, I struggled to read through that book. It was um, a bit of a slog at times, but the information was amazing. And so I, I recommend anyone who's a little bit more advanced to read it. It's definitely not a beginner book. No, no, it's 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 not pleasant reading, as you said, but it will it will make you make your um, robustness testing procedures better. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> okay, so that's the first book, Evidence Based Technical Analysis by David Aronson. Uh, we got a question here from Huz. Are the concepts in the in this book used in VTA? Uh, you know, I also read this book uh, many years later, and this book was pretty much the reason why I started to work on my robustness testing procedures. Uh, because uh, before this book, I was pretty naive about robustness testing procedures, mm. and uh, 
there are not really concepts in, in this book. It's not like do this, do that. It's just like it makes you think. It's more, it's almost philosophical book, which makes you think about natural human biases and how this can be jeopardizing our real time performance. So it doesn't give you any concepts or technical advices. It just puts a lot of storm into your brain. And when you step out from this brain, you realize you need to start doing things differently. And uh, this book was the uh, fundamental initiator of developing my um, robustness uh, testing procedures. Uh, and right now, uh, I share all of them in the Breakout Strategies Masterclass, which is uh, version 4.0. So um, it's already pretty mature. But yes, this book was at the beginning of creating these procedures. Yeah, I think this book can apply to any kind of approach you use if you're building strategies algorithmically. Um, it doesn't matter really what tool set you use or whether you use the BTA framework or some other framework. I think this book can apply across all of those, right? It's very conceptual. Yes. Very, yep. very, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good question, Huz or Hutz. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So For some reason, I cannot see any question. I just oh. want to say, for some reason, I cannot see any question uh, in chat today. So please, uh, if there will be any, bring them up. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. So that's book number one. Do you want to do a book, an intro for book two, or should I just get straight yeah, to yeah, it? Yeah, do the intro. Here please. we go. I'm curious. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I've already clicked the button. <laughs> uh, Van Tharp's Definitive Guide to Position you Sizing did. Strategies. Okay. Yeah. This is a big one. Right. Yeah, this is, it is a big one, actually. It's this Literally. size and that thick. So it's a huge one. <laughs> one of the biggest books on trading. It's probably the biggest book on trading. I actually have it here. Look. Yeah. If I drop this on my toe, I would yeah. have a very, very It's really book. thick. It's a great book, though. Yeah. It's like th three kilos or something like that. Um. <laughs> So you know, you know the way the previous book was my uh, philosophical foundation for creating robustness testing procedures. This book was pretty much my foundation to launch uh, a hedge fund. Um, and I, for a long time, I was reluctant to launch a hedge fund because I didn't, I thought I didn't have enough experience. And in a sense, uh, the real reason was I didn't have enough confidence. Uh, and I. I always was fighting with the question, what would I do uh, if I had a lot of money? How, how would I manage it? What would be the conceptual approach? And I didn't have any key. And that's why I was postponing decision to launch my own hedge fund despite many offers. And then I read this book and I realized that launching a hedge fund is very doable because this book uh, provides a very, very clear path to to working with a lot of money in a very, very efficient way and utilizing a lot of money to uh, smooth your equity curve and uh, improve your uh, overall performance. So I read this book and uh, this resulted into some proprietary concepts. So uh, at the end of the day, I didn't use many advices from this book, just some of them, but it gave me the confidence. It showed me the path. And I don't think this book is for total beginners or people with a smaller account. But I think once you start thinking about uh, managing or trading some reasonable account, at least I would say half million dollar or more, uh, then this is a highly practical guide how to achieve your uh, goals better and faster. And I think the, this is the most beautiful part of this book, the practicality. It's so practical. Everything is explained in clear uh, spreadsheet with all the formulas and uh, you cannot overlook anything with this book it it, it as practical as it can only get and uh, again another book that significantly pushed my boundaries because showed me uh, what is uh, possible and uh, what is the key to a lot of money and potentially launching hedge fund uh, and improving results significantly with position sizing um so I can highly recommend among my very top, top uh, trading books ever for sure. Yep. And your favorite part of the book was? 
You know what? Uh, the SQN uh, uh, introduction, I totally love the, although I don't use it, uh, I used it at the beginning and I you don't use it at all anymore. I love the concept, the way it's explained, uh, the impact of SQN. I think it's brilliant. It's, I think Van Tarp, I think very few people realize how much of a novelty and, uh, you know, contribution Van Tarp uh, made to the trading industry. I think Van Tarp was never among, you know, he, he never was as popular as, I don't know, Larry Williams or um, Alexander Elder because he was way more advanced and uh, talking in more sophisticated language. But uh, his contribution to trading community, it's enormous and uh, advanced traders definitely will always appreciate Van Tarp's uh, teaching. Yep. Yep. I remember one of the... Um... One of the parts in that book that I, I thought pretty neat, I, I haven't used it yet, but I, maybe one day, is the concept of having some markets money and then your own money and, and being able to kind of adjust the volatility of your portfolio by trading in a special way. And I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, I haven't been able to apply it yet, but one day, one day I think that I think there's some merit in doing that, especially when you're managing a lot of money for people and they want smoother returns. So there's a lot of good concepts in this book. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yes. Um, yes. And I, 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 we have, if I may say, we have a, we have a position size in Zinc specialist in our elite mastermind program. Um, his name is Jim. And I think he keeps uh, making, uh, he, he really, whenever he presents anything, uh, which he's got obviously a lot from uh, Van Tarp's teaching and he presents some things to the elite community. Everybody is, uh, for everyone, it's a mind-blowing presentation each time because there's so much mm. to do and so much to achieve with position sizing. It's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of questions in the chat about this one. Question from Walter. Um, does this book mention formulas for calculating risk of ruin? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't... It talks a lot about this i don't re recall all the formulas in details but it talks a lot about risk of ruin and uh, different ways to calculate it so it it does but it does mention formulas i don't recall how much in depth yeah yeah um okay question here from who's i think statistics is used if i remember correctly in the first book are you using statistics in the bta framework yeah of course Absolutely. Yeah, the whole approach is is heavily uh, based on numbers and statistics. I would yep. say the whole framework is uh, overly developed on evidence-based uh, analysis and nothing else. There's yep. very, very, very little room for anything but uh, evidence-based analysis. <laughs> yep. And another question, is DPS based on Van Tharp's book? Not at all. DPS is a completely different uh, concept, uh, which we developed way later after reading do, this book, some mm. eight years or seven years later, yep. maybe more. Okay, so that one, I'll have to say this book is also a classic, position sizing classic. I know other people have written position sizing books that are really, to be honest, just rehashes of the information in this one, but I think this is the best one and the most complete one. Okay, so, um, so that's the second book, Van Tarp's Definitive Guide to Position Sizing Strategies. The third one, I'm excited for this one. Here we go. It's coming up. It's got a very right. unsexy title, Statistically Sound Indicated <laughs> Financial or Financial Market Predictions by Tim Masters. Yeah, so this is the... Ever quite honestly. <laughs> and that's very interesting because I don't like reading this book. It's super technical. I don't understand the coding language. It, it goes nitty gritty, uh, technical details. It's for engineers. Uh, and uh, reading this book for me, it's, it's real pain. However, I love, I love different views on things that are presenting in the book. Like the concepts, the application of this concept, I think it's for high-level C++ coders. 
and people who really love stuff like that. But uh, the conceptual thinking behind these codes and approaches that Timothy Masters uh, presents in the book are, again, totally shaking uh, my view and giving a different perspective on trading. And that's, that's what you aim for when you're more experienced trader. Right. When you're more experienced trade and you already know what you're doing, what you appreciate mostly is a different view or something that gives you way different angles. So you can shake up a little bit your current view, step out of uh, the comfort zone and see if you can start thinking a little bit differently about your trading. And this book did it for after a long, long, long time. This was I, I read this book about three years ago. Finally, at I thought that no book would surprise me anymore with interesting uh, new no ideas with novelty. This one surprised me. So that's the latest one I read uh, that I put on my list uh, of trading books. A lot of interesting ideas. And I'm still testing them and going through them. Uh, it really makes you question some parts of your development process, which again, it's always a good thing. We want to read as experienced traders. We want to read books that help us to question what we do so we can find gaps and improve them. And this book definitely does this job. Uh, so, yeah, very, very good book. Very difficult to read, at least for me. Yep, exactly. Um, I love this book as well, but I also had the same challenges as you. It's very um, technical. But some of the concepts, actually, we missed the last slide, which has your your favorite part, which I th I thought was really the big um, one of the big concepts that kind of opened my eyes to uh, indicators and and how they're used is this concept of entropy, which we won't go into today because it's very technical. But it was uh, you know we're still re researching this idea and um, yeah, it has some legs. So I think this book, actually, I just remembered I did a. An interview with Tim Masters on the Better System Trader podcast, and we talked about um, the degradation of strategies and all these uh, concepts or techniques that you can use to, um, you know, measure and hopefully avoid degradation of trading strategies. So uh, that's a little bit more accessible than the book. The book is is kind of hard to read, but the, if you go and um, just go to bettersystemtrader.com and search for Tim Masters, and you'll find the interview there. He's very accessible in that interview. So I think he's brilliant, but I don't understand everything he says. He's way above my intellect level. But uh, um, it's a good book to stretch yeah, your, uh, way above your, mine I guess your well. ideas, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So well, we got a yeah. question. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. We, we got yeah. a question here. <laughs> From from Walter, I don't know if we can answer this one, Walter. <laughs> do you do you remember any of the statistically sound indicators? Uh, I do remember the entropy concept, which I alone also deploy some indicators. Um, yeah, the entropy indica indicator that we both remember. That's a that's a that's a really great one. Yeah, and it's not necessarily an indicator anyway. It's more more of a conceptual idea that applies to indicators, right? So um, we've got a question here from. Hoods. Yeah, true. I don't I don't understand why it's oh. called indicators because it it doesn't talk about indicators much, does it? No, well, he does test some, I guess, in the book, but uh, yeah, it's really more about the concepts. I think how you can apply them to your own trading. Uh, what says, can you combine Van Tharp's position sizing and DPS? Um, not really. These are vast different approaches. It's a completely different way of thinking. Let's say, let's say, let's say the Van Tharp's book is his contribution to position sizing and DPS is position sizing. Very different concept. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I just posted in the chat the Tim Masters interview. If anyone wants to go and check that one out, they want to explore Tim Masters a bit more. All right, so that was the third book, Statistically Sound Indicators for Financial Market Prediction by Mr. Timothy Masters, a brilliant book. Uh, and the last one, I think it's the last one. We're doing four, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're doing four. Dr. Brett Steenbarger, Psychology yeah. of Trading. Yeah, you know, 
the common funny thing about trading is that psychology is so important part of trading and uh, 99% traders completely ignore it. Like, no, that's not me. I'm Mr. Zen. I choose it all. I can handle everything. I do not freak up in drawdown. Uh, I'm perfectly balanced human being. I'm a next Buddha. And you know, this is, this is, <laughs> this, this is basically what happens when I start talking about trading psychology in front of traders. Like everybody's, no, not me, not me. I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm completely uh, balanced human being. <coughs> well, I am not, guys. I am not. That's why I need books like this, right? Like, I know my uh, human weaknesses, uh, subconscious biases, programming. Uh, <coughs> and that's why I need to learn how to, I need to understand how this is influencing my trading and why sometimes I'm making stupid decisions because I don't want to be making them. Uh, and this is the... This is the best books that can really uh, help anyone understand uh, some behavioral patterns related to, uh, let's say, less efficient trading or uh, tr common trading mistakes. A lot of common, a lot of common trading mistakes are not by technical nature. That's just what traders do. They blame them to technicalities and brokers and stuff out out there, but are mm. internal conflicts. And uh, Brett Steinberger, he describes him in such a beautiful, digestible, human, yet very uh, traders pro, traders like uh, manner and language that everybody, everybody will start having this click, click, click and seeing how and why psychology is important. Uh, and I read this book like four times uh, with a friend of mine in the past. We even purchased the. Uh, for Czech Republic, and we uh, translated it into uh, Czech language uh, because this is, I think, this is really essential for trading some psychology, and it's very practical. It just all the he, he shares a lot of his own experience and practice, clinical practice, and uh, it doesn't mean that it will make you a pa patient, right? Like sometimes traders think if they open this Pandora's box, they will become a patient. No, it just another very objective, uh, educated, uh, practical view on what might be going in our head. Uh, and, you know, in trading, we're not just optimizing our performance uh, in platform or in a code. We also need to optimize our performance in our head. And that's it. That's all. This book gives you some guidance how to optimize your performance in your head uh, with, with very good steps, practical steps. And it works. It helped me a lot, this book. Mm, yep, a very good book. Um, Bill's asked a brilliant question. Let me put this up on the screen. This comes up quite often, I think. Doesn't statistical results help to override trading psychology? Yeah, until you're in 20% drawdown. <laughs> then w w once you hit 20% drawdown, uh, please tell me uh, about statistical results. <laughs> then all your statistical results go to the trash bin and uh, you will not you will not be them no it 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 helps you to ha find your edge it helps you uh, create good strategies but you're losing your money that uh, took uh, you a lot of time to make a lot of effort uh, we're all emotional regarding money once you start losing money i mean just being in a regular drown nothing fancy your psychology will kick in each time. That's the way it is. Uh, you cannot override, uh, override this with any code. There's no code <laughs> writing like, if in 20% drawdown, switch off my emotions. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that'd be nice, no wouldn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, it would be nice. Doesn't override. No, <laughs> no Bill, good yeah. question. Doesn't. I, no. I think that's a common Not in a drawdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's a common misconception in algo trading is... Okay, I'll just let the, mm. the computer do the work and I won't touch it. But, yeah, you, you do find a way to get involved, especially in during a drawdown. So, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I was just thinking about this quote, Mike, um, Neil. As Mike Tyson says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> so I, I think you're right, Thomas. That, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially when exactly. drawdown occurs, your emotions do kick in, even if the computer's doing the trading. So it's just a human 
tendency that we need to be uh, mindful of. Oh, he, uh, here's a good uh, comment Absolutely. from Rock. G'day, Rock. Uh, I got the strategies and couldn't do it. Yeah. Trading psychology uh, mm. has That's many ways one. it can influence That's us. That's a big yep. one. Yeah. And here's one from... Uh, I, I, I agree. Rock, Rock oh. I appreciate your self-honesty. This is very important. Yeah. I yeah, think the self-honesty that just uh, expressed uh, Rock that, that's the first step to really make a difference. Yeah. We got a comment here from algorithmic system, system low. <laughs> Even if we do algo trading, do we need to focus on psychology side? Isn't that already for, doesn't that already figure out the psychology? Yeah. No, that's a big misconception. That's a big lie, big, big misunderstanding, big, big fallacy, big misconception. Not at all. No. You will not be released from the duty to master your psychology with any approach, including algorithmic approach. I guess maybe if you get someone else to trade your strategies and you never look at the results, maybe then, but then you'll probably <laughs> you'll probably not sleep very well at night because you'll be always be wondering what the results are. So, um, but then you must never look, right? Because. Once you, you must never ever look because once you look and there will be a drawdown, boom, you're you're there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you, uh, you, what is the word in English? Relapse, relapse. You 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 look once and you relapse <laughs> into yeah. your psychology panic mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. relapse into the psycho psychology panic mode. Yeah, yeah. Look once, you relapse. <laughs> Okay, and uh, your favorite part of the book? Mm -hmm. the, the entire, entire book. book. <laughs> it really helped me. It really helped me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and you, you know, I would like to say one thing also about, if I may, because, you know, it's easier. It. What is the worst day? worst way is to keep denying that psychology is needed even for algorithmic trading and a lot of algo traders are in complete denial no 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 computer will figure all this for me and this is a huge denial uh mentality which will get you stuck better than keep denying that psychology of trading is for everyone even as algorithmic trading is just to grab this book and read it it it's very readable you'll read it in a couple of nights and you'll get a completely new insight and it's way better than trying to rationalize why you don't need it. Simple. Yep. A uh, question here from Bill. How does how does Mark Douglas compare to Brett Steinberger? Yeah, that's a good back. That's a very good question. I love both, uh, Bill. Mm. I think Brett is way more practical, way more practical with a lot of uh, uh, real case studies. He provides a lot of real case studies in the book. So it's, it's, I would say Mark Douglas, it's kind of an introduction, not for everyone. Brett's book is so practical with so many case studies. Yep. Okay. So I skipped a couple of questions and comments in the chat. Let's go back. Um, this one from Huz Hutz. Really need to find out how to say your name. Uh, have you read Ella's books? Are you using Ella's indicators in the BOSS framework or in Elite? I did read his books. I I, I do not uh, align with Eller's uh, work. Uh, to me, it's more for engineers. I do not use his uh, indicators. Uh, and that doesn't mean they're bad or they're not working. No, not at all. I know guys who use it and like it. It just means that I do not align with uh, this kind of work. Uh, it just doesn't resonate with me. Uh, so, no, I don't use it. I use some of his indicators, but not all of them. But but he's very technical. I think he's got some great ideas. But again, that's like above my intellect. So I use some of his stuff, but I don't I don't understand how it works. <laughs> um, okay, comment here from Jace. I have problems when my strategies don't enter and exit as they were supposed to. So uh, this was posted yeah, when one. we were talking about psychology of trading. So. No, this is this is great, Jace. This is you know even observing where you have problems and admitting that we 
are triggered in some cases that already helps a lot um yeah i don't i don't know what you mean exactly by supposed to like if there's a technical mismatch or it's your ideal scenario where they supposed to but exactly that's it that's it we we all have some trigger points and when these points are triggered we have the tendency to over override the system or do something unrational and it's simple trading psychology is just about revealing these tendencies bringing them to the light being aware of them mindful of them and just by being mindful of them they're already becoming weaker and weaker so it's it's a lot about self self honesty so this is this is great if you share this great thank you mm. yeah all right thomas uh, i think we caught up with the comments in the chat we've got one more slide and here we go here it comes challenge yeah oh my goodness so guys again these are <coughs> these books are it you can really most of them you can read uh in a week well maybe i'm overly optimistic here oh, yeah. if you have a lot of time you can work <laughs> you'd yeah, have to be superman right. i think maybe one book a month yeah 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 probably <laughs> yeah yeah you're right you're right yeah <laughs> this is overly optimistic yeah i think i i remember the evidence based technique analysis that was a one but i did read it in one uh week but i had time the one tarp i definitely read it in three four evenings because i was eager to finish it uh but i read uh four five hours uh, in a row uh the timothy masters i didn't read in a week i have to admit i it took me mm -hmm. two months to go through this book and trading the, the dr steinberger i read it in one week because again i i love this book and topic and it was so readable but i had a lot of time as well so it's, that's only if you're on holiday on one month holiday then you can do it otherwise it's better to digest one book per month i agree <laughs> but uh i can i can sincerely recommend all four of them really really only if you're advanced it will not do much it will i think it will not contribute much to beginners i think it will probably yeah. i think for beginners it will have the the opposite effect it will probably mess up with your brain and uh, will get you to place where you don't want to be at the beginning because it's very challenging and very advanced reading and you don't don't also you don't need this complexity at the beginning at all this is like we're talking about uh icing on the cake right like things that you will appreciate in two three four years uh, but if yeah. you're there already you will appreciate these books for sure <laughs> <laughs> so if uh so we did actually do it a, a um a show on beginners books so uh, i don't have the link here but if you go into searching youtube in our channel you'll see uh it was in december sometime we did uh a book on uh beginners uh sorry trading books for beginners so go check that out uh we've got a comment here from algorithmic system system mm -hmm. blur <laughs> i really like the dps method do you think DPS is more advanced method according to other position sizing methods? It's not that more advanced; it's different. You know, it, that, I think I think that's the point. Understanding this, that people always like, how do you compare Van Tarp and DPS? These are two completely different methods. Like Van Tarp, he invented he invented SQN, and that was his contribution. SQN was his contribution. I, I, I had the privilege to be abundant with uh, ideas and, and you know, was able to come up with something new as well, which I don't even contribute to myself. It just came out of the blue nowhere. So I, I had the privilege to be able to come up with something new as well, which is completely different new way to position sizing, completely new. It's, it's got nothing to do with any other traditional position sizing, nothing with TARP. And I hope, I really hope, this is my contribution uh, to this topic uh, that hopefully will be a little bit of a legacy in years as well, or maybe will not, but definitely it's a different view and different contribution. Yep. Absolutely. If you want to find out more information about DPS, head over to dpstradingtechnique.com. I'll put it in the chat. Um, there's a little, uh, there's an ebook there you can download and have a look at the, how the concept works. I think it's brilliant, actually. It's a pretty clever idea from... Uh, Thomas, uh, thanks for sharing that one. And algorithmic system, system, <laughs> is that German? That's, that feels like it's German. I can't say that. 
Um, thanks for sharing your comments on DPS. I'm glad you are getting some value from that. Question from Hutz. What order would you recommend reading these books? It, so I'll put them up has, on the screen again. It depends where you are. Yeah, it, it, it really depends where you are. It, it's what is what is the biggest pain point for you, right? If if you feel you need to improve your robustness testing procedures, go with the first one. If you want to manage a lot of money and don't know how to do it, read the second one. Uh, if you want a brand new view on technical analysis indicators, statistical uh, measurement, uh, and if you want to also, um, you know, satisfy a lot of intellectual appetite, go with the third one. If you think that psychology can be holding you back from peak performance, go with the fourth one. Mm. All right. Thanks for that. And only, only, only you know, only you know which one is your biggest uh, <laughs> challenge right now. Yeah. What do you, What do you tell us, Hutz? What do you think? What What one are you going to read first? And anyone else who wants to uh, you know, comment in the chat as well. What did you think about Thomas's selection of the top four books for advanced traders? I would have to say I agree with all of them, every single one. They're probably. Um, oh, by the way, my name is pronounced has. Has okay, I remember, or maybe that's Haz. <laughs> I don't know. My Australian can butcher any name. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so thanks for sharing those, Thomas. If you uh, enjoyed the show today, please give us a thumbs up uh, on the video, and um, and make sure you subscribe so that when we uh, release any new content, you are notified. And Thomas, any closing comments before we wrap up for today? Uh, you just froze for three seconds, so I didn't hear what you said. Okay. Any any closing comments before we wrap up for today? Uh, good question. Um, Jibu's <laughs> guys, seriously, like read them. <laughs> That's the only comment I can give you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Thomas. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us today, and thank you for putting up with our tech issues. But we got there, and uh, we hopefully uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you again in the next one in two weeks' time. Ciao. Yeah. Good trading. Bye-bye. Good trading.